Hi everyone, this is going to be a channeled message. This is for probably a few specific people. My spirit guide's been wanting me to talk about this for a couple weeks or so now. Uh, I feel like, so I'm probably not going to use cards for this. I feel like my spirit guides have already shown me what they want me to talk about. So some of it's going to be channeled. I'm sure more information will come through as I, as I get into it, as I start talking about it. And it's also just, just a discussion. They just want me to talk about my own experience as well, because whoever this is for, you're going to relate to that. You're going to relate. I'm, I'm not really a traditional type of healer. I'm not like a positive vibes only type of healer. And they're telling me that you're the same way and that you're going to relate to, to my experiences and to what I'm sharing. My spirit guides have been doing this thing lately where they, they're pushing me to share more personal details. I actually did a video on my experiences with my twin flame and I ended up deleting it because it was just too personal, but I'm going to go back in the near future and do another one of those as well. But but again, it's going to be more of a discussion and also just channeled messages. But um, anyway, so when I, when I started doing, when I sat down to do this reading, I saw a flash of the movie Stigmata. I don't know if any of you guys remember that movie. And I'm not, I, I was trying to figure out what my spirit guides were trying to show me with that because that is one way that my spirit guides communicate with me. And I think that they were, they wanted me to tell you why they were showing me that. I feel like they're saying that it was like an initiation. I don't fully remember that movie. It's been years and years since I've seen it. But I think that... And it's more of a horror movie, so I'm not I'm not necessarily recommending it. You know, I don't I don't usually like horror movies, but but anyway, I saw it years and years ago, actually as a kid. <laughs> but I think in that movie, it's like she she went through um. I feel like she she went she went through all these uh, it's like these these trials like these if you, if you've seen it you know. She she went through like these these physical tests where she um had to like receive the wounds of Christ or something like that and it was like an initiation like it was actually considered a very, uh holy um, like it was considered a, a privilege I guess or it was considered some type of initiation, and I don't think my my spirit guides aren't saying that you need to go through physical pain or anything like that or that you need to sacrifice yourself I don't feel like they're saying that I feel like the initiation part is what they were trying to draw my attention to is that maybe. Uh, if you're a healer, it's like you might have had a very rough childhood, either mentally or physically, but you're meant to take that energy and help others heal with it. It's like you you probably don't understand why things had to happen the way that they did. You look back and you're like, why? Why me? Why did I go through this? Like you have certain traumas where you're still just like, why did I go through this? Or you might even have a physical illness and <clears throat> it might even actually be a... um like a soul contract where you're meant to help other people with this physical illness or this mental disability that you have. Like you're meant to be some type of leader. That's probably for just one specific person, but for the most, for the rest of you, I just feel like you're not traditional healers. So let me get into, basically they're just saying this is part of your path. And honestly, damaged people make the best healers, in my opinion. Like I consider myself a healer and I constantly, I mean, I deal with depression and anxiety and I have to like, do, you know, keep it in check and do my best to, to make sure I control it and not let it control me. But in the spiritual community, that's, that's frowned upon. You know, a lot of the people in the spiritual community are just positive vibes only. They, they don't allow the full spectrum of, of human emotions, of human experiences in. So, I mean, and I constantly, I have days when I doubt myself too. I'm like, how can I be a healer when I've gone through this and this and this? And then my spirit guides show me. And I'm talking about myself because again, whoever this is for, you're going to resonate with what I've gone through. This is going to make sense. Your path is is the same or, or very similar at least. But it's like, I have those days when I doubt myself too, where I'm like, I'm a mess. Like I've gone through, you know, all these, all these different things. Like I, you know. I've, I've been through a lot and you know they always show me they bring me back to it they're like that is like the best type of healer that is the type of healer that can dig deep because you have that empathy you have that understanding for other people you can you can dig deep and help people do the shadow work you can resonate with that you can you can kind of lead them out of that and help them balance their emotions help them just kind of flow naturally with you know all the good and all the bad it's like you're meant to have those life experiences to, to help other people. 
And it's not saying you have to go through a lot of trauma, otherwise you're not a good healer. I mean, you can be a healer anyway, you don't have to go through that. But whoever I'm talking to, you have gone through all those things, is what I'm feeling. And that does make you, I think you're also in your head, where you're like, well, how can I be a healer if I'm damaged too? I mean, again, damaged people, I think, make the best healers. You have that empathy, you have the life experience, you have the emotional depth, you know how to connect with people. What people really need is is love, is is connection, is that that raw emotion, that passion. They need that that emotional depth. They need to deeply connect with others. They need to be heard. They need to be understood. And the thing is that someone it's it's harder for someone who hasn't experienced it to be able to give that to somebody, to be able to heal on such a deep level. There's so the other message I was getting is I feel like you're being misled by the people around you because I feel like you feel this pull. You know that you're meant to be a healer. You know that you're meant to do some some very deep healing work. Like you know, you have this call. You have this empathy for people. But I feel like you're, you're not sure how to put it into practice or you just don't have the right mentors around you. you so there's a, there's a few messages here about that as well. And we're going to get deeper into it. But I wanted to say a lot of the, okay, so in the spiritual community, especially, there is a lot of, I think it's called spiritual gaslighting or spiritual bypassing, I believe it's called. Um, it's something that you might want to look into, spiritual bypassing, I believe it is. But it's basically, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you'd call them false healers, but but just these these healer types in the community, especially, you know, new age spiritual community, psychic community that just want to put a band-aid on it they just it's positive vibes only they think that they can just ignore any you know negative emotions like anger pain they think that they can just suppress them and everything will be good and you can feel the the tension when you do that if you're feeling upset you need to like let yourself be upset but I think the key is to let it flow don't you know you need to have control over it instead of letting it control you and when you try to suppress your shadow side, when you try to deny those aspects of yourself, when you try to deny your, uh, your anger, your pain, your, your very normal human emotions, when you try to deny your deeper desires, when you try to deny a huge part of who you are, that shadow side demands to be heard and it ends up coming out later in uglier ways. But, you know, there's there's another path where you can balance that. You can balance that all out. You can balance your shadow side with your higher self and your ego and all of those things. All of those things have their place. And that's the thing with a lot of these, these toxic healers is that they convince you to, they try to convince people in the community to suppress very uh, important aspects of themselves. The ego, for example... And I know I'm kind of ranting here, but again, this is this is for someone. This is important. I will get more into the channeled messages as we go on. Just bear with me. But anyway, these these kind of you know love and light and positive vibes only healers that they just try to get you to put a bandaid on it and you know just just think positive or whatever. They try to get you to suppress your your ego as well. And you can't really suppress your ego because if you do that, it's gonna again. There's you can't be free of your ego. We're human. We have human minds. There's no way to be completely free of your ego, but I do believe that you can get to a point of enlightenment where your higher self, your spiritual side is, is stronger than your ego is, and it's the one that's in control, but your ego still, it, it shouldn't be out of control. Like you do need to keep your ego in check. I do agree with that, but you can't banish the ego. It's, it's actually uh, egotistical in itself to even try to banish the ego like you see these people in the spiritual community where they're like you know I'm gonna be ego free I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the most enlightened person I'm gonna be on I'm gonna be you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be the most enlightened I can be I'm gonna be more enlightened than everybody what do you think that is that is ego the, even that that journey of, of trying to be so much spiritually better than everybody else that's ego that's, you know, there's no getting rid of the ego. But but again, the ego can be a really good thing. The ego is there to protect you. The ego can drive you. It's not a bad thing to be confident once in a while, to be, you know, competitive in healthy ways even, but not, not toxic ways, but healthy ways. You know, the ego can be a really good thing, but again, it has its place. 
The issue is that a lot of people let their ego get out of control. So you really have to kind of learn to, um, to balance all these things out to control, you know, you can't banish the ego, but you can, you can have some control over the ego and let, instead of letting it control you, all these things have their place, your shadow side, your ego, your higher self, your, your emotional state, all of those things have, the, have their place and they need to come into balance. They need to be in alignment with each other. If you deny certain aspects of yourself, you're going to become out of alignment sooner or later. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong because they they get on this kind of like a, I don't know if it's like a spiritual high or what it is, but they go on this kick where they're like, oh, I'm going to be free of my ego. And then, you know, months down the road, it's it's like they they have this rude awakening. You know, same with people that are like trying to be free of their shadow side. They're like, oh, I'm just going to ignore all all these traumas that I don't want to look at, all this these addictions or this, you know, whatever it is down there that they don't want to look at. They just try to ignore it. They're like, it's fine. It, it'll just go away. I'm just going to be positive all the time. And you, you probably feel great at first. The first few months, you probably feel like, wow, like my life has changed. And then down the road, it's like you crash because that side of yourself demands to be heard. So again, the key is um, the key is really looking at these things, I think, and, and balancing them out, not, you know, you controlling them instead of letting them control you. It is normal to feel anger. It is normal to feel pain sometimes. It's normal to to feel, you know, the full spectrum of human emotions, just letting it flow naturally. But it, but again, it's it's key to to kind of let them pass through you. Feel them, but don't don't cling on and feed them necessarily. You know what I mean? Like if you're feeling pain and anger, let it out. Let yourself feel it. Let yourself purge. But let it flow naturally. Don't try to hold on to it and feed it and make it worse than it is you know, keep it in balance, keep everything, feel your emotions naturally, let things flow and keep things in balance. Um, and honestly, I feel like, you know, I personally, even when I have days when I'm depressed or sad or whatever, I still feel so much better these days because I'm not at war with myself. I'm not, I'm, I'm acknowledging it. I'm, I'm allowing room for it. I'm letting things flow naturally. I'm not denying a very normal human side of myself. And I'm looking at that too, you know, was it, there's, there was some quote I heard where I think it was like a therapist that was saying, you know, your anger isn't a toxic thing. Your anger is actually the side of yourself that loves you and, and is upset about the mistreatment that you went through and knows that you deserve better. Your anger is a side of yourself that is trying to protect you and trying to point out something. So instead of seeing anger or pain as your enemy, look at them. What are they trying to tell you? What is it that's missing in your life? Where is this anger stemming from? Is it a childhood wound? What? Where is it coming from? Is there a control issue? Is there something that you haven't noticed? Because you know when you're just trying to think positive all the time, you can't see it. You can't dig deep and get to the you know the root of the issue because you're not even acknowledging it's there in the first place. So, but, but again, balance it out. I'm not saying to just dive in and go from one extreme to the other. I'm saying to balance all, you know, the positive and negative human emotions out, balance things out naturally, let things flow. And, you know, you'll feel that difference, that energy difference, just not being at war with yourself. You know, I'm a witch and, and, and you have to also understand there's so many different perspectives. What works for me isn't, might not work for you or it might, or, or vice versa. What works for other people that's why I'm talking to someone here where it's like you are a leader, you are a healer, you're you can seek out guidance with the right mentors, but you still have to go down your own path. And so it's like somebody's trying to be more of a follower when you're actually on a soul level, you're more of a leader. And so you're being misled by the people around you who are actually false leaders who just kind of have control issues is what I'm feeling. Um, and we'll get more into it. But I, I wanted to say too, I'm a witch and like personally for me. I manifest best when, when I'm emo emotional, actually. And you have to be careful with witchcraft, of course, like what energy you're putting in there. I'm not saying to just put anything in there, but like when I'm emotional, when I'm passionate, when I'm letting it flow, that's when I manifest the most. It's if, if I were to go to witchcraft and just try to, you know, do it by the book and just positive vibes only and be really controlled with it, I wouldn't manifest as much. So... 
So I'm feeling, so what I wanted to say about these, these false healer types, and I, again, I feel like some of these people are around you, or it's like, you're trying to seek out a mentor, mentor, or you're trying to seek out some type of guidance. Um, because again, you're feeling called to be a healer, you feel like you are a leader from your past lives, like you feel that that pull, you might even be close to going through a psychic awakening. Or you could be in the middle of a psychic awakening even. But I, I feel like I feel like you're around a lot of false healers. I keep seeing, and for someone, I'm seeing one woman in particular. She's got like black curly hair and she's older. Not like old, old, but like maybe like, she's not like old, but she's like probably like in her 50s, possibly 60s. Um, I think someone has like, I, I'm getting like control issues though here. Let me see. Okay, so I think I need to talk about the, the okay. I need to talk about something else here and then we'll we'll get on to it. Thank you guys for bearing with me. I hope this is resonating for the whoever this is for. I hope this makes sense to you. But so there's a lot of like positive vibes only healers out there that we were talking about. You know, the the you know, you have to suppress your your all your pain or your anger. You have to ignore it. You have to just think positive all the time. And I feel like Yes, they, they probably are healers to some degree, but I think that there's only a certain type of person that resonates with them for the most part. And I feel like they're very surface level healers. They do not know how to do, um, I'm hearing shamanism, so maybe that's for somebody, but I'm hearing they don't, they don't know how to dig deep. They, they really don't know how to get deep. They don't know how to actually get to the root of the issue. They don't know how to help people purge. They don't know how to help people face their shadow side and their inner demons. Um, they they don't know. It's it's like a very temporary healing effect where they can make people feel better for a couple weeks, for a month or so. But long term, they, they don't have that ability to really genuinely heal somebody is in my opinion, at least. And again, it's not saying that you have to go through a lot of trauma to be a good healer, but but again, it does it does help to be able to have that depth and that experience and that empathy to help you understand. Because again, what people need most is is love and connection. They they need to be heard. They need to be understood. That's you know that's one of the keys I think to helping people heal. But um, but yeah, you have to also understand that the subconscious mind comes into play. So if you haven't gone through a lot of traumas, like if you've had a, a fairly normal life, a fairly good life, then yeah, positive vibes only is going to work for you. It's going to work for you because there's there's nothing deeper. There's no deep underlying um, traumas or blocks or anything subconsciously. There's nothing there that really needs to be cleared. You're good. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like, yeah, like people like that will resonate with that. But And the subconscious mind is so much stronger than the conscious mind. So I feel like manifestation does work for people that are in that energy of, of having fairly easy lives. There's nothing subconsciously that's that's going working against them. But for the majority of people that have gone through traumas, I have gone through a lot, you know, and that's something that the law of attraction doesn't really get deep enough into because I do believe in the law of attraction, um, like in, you know, the secret and manifestation, all of that. But I think it's a lot deeper and more complicated than than people seem to believe because again your subconscious mind comes into play so you can sit there all day long and 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 you know have these positive affirmations and positive vibes only and this and that but if you have a lot going on subconsciously that's going to override that for the most part so you have to really use subliminals to reprogram your subconscious you have to and the affirmations do help don't get me wrong i'm not saying they're not doing anything but you need more than that in my opinion if you've really had a rough childhood or a rough life in general then you know it, it's like you're just fighting your subconscious if you think that you know the affirmations just on their own are going to be enough to override that and that's kind of where the spiritual gaslighting thing comes in as well that's another thing because it makes these people feel like they're doing something wrong like they're not being positive enough they're not believing hard enough when it, it's not their fault, their subconscious is working against them. And that's something that I wish that mo more, you know, spiritual healers would talk about and, and look at. Um, 
And again, again, I feel like the affirmations do help. It's a good starting point. But if you've gone through a lot of traumas, you do need to listen to um, subliminals from channels that you trust. You do need to uh, do the affirmations as well, but but also do the shadow work as well. There might be certain blocks or certain triggers that you need to look at, things that need to be heard, acknowledged, understood, purged, things that need to be brought to light, brought into alignment um, so that things can flow naturally and you can get on board with really manifesting. But, but yeah, again, that's something that I just wish that, that books like The Secret would, would talk more about because it's not, yes, you can use the laws of attraction, but it's not as simple as positive vibes only and you can get whatever you want. You know, you have to look at the subconscious mind. You have to look at the deeper aspects as well um, to, to really, you know, figure everything out. And I want to say, too, you also have to... What, what works for you might not work for me and vice versa. You have to, there, there's very few universal truths out there. Everyone wants like a, a leader that can just give them like, you know, this, th this is the truth. This is the way, you know, but it, it's, there's, there's not very many of those universal truths out there. The reality is positive thinking does work to manifest what you want for some people. For others, it's, you know, passion or, or emotion. Some people even manifest through anger. It's like there's there's so many what works for for one person isn't going to work for another. And so I think you're really being guided to to really do some soul search and go inward, do some meditation even and really think about maybe journal even do some journaling and look at your past patterns. Look at uh, what's what's worked for you, what's worked for you when you've manifested things. For me personally, it's always when I'm in like a free spirited, adventurous energy. I'm not really positive or negative. It's it's more of like a when I'm just being emotional, like I'm, when I'm just um, when I'm just flowing, I'm just I'm just open. There's no control issues. I'm just when I'm just open and things are just flowing and I'm taking risks. That's when I notice I manifest the most. So, but again, that might be a nightmare to, to one person that might not work at all for one person. It's, it's going to, I mean, for a lot of people, I think it would work, but, but again, it's going to be different for everybody based on your past lives, your current life experience, all of it. And so you've got to take those things into account. And I, th I think to be a good healer as well, you also have to understand multiple perspectives. You have to understand, um, because even if you, even if, a uh, you know, if someone comes to you for healing, even if you don't completely, like it helps when you resonate with them. It helps a lot. But I think that if you can understand multiple perspectives, you can still help other people heal, even if that's not your perspective. You can still hold space for their perspective, even if you're not adopting that perspective yourself. I really hope that makes sense. But but yeah, someone's, someone here is being guided to like find their own way here, to find you're meant to be a leader. You're meant to be an innovator. And whoever I'm talking to, it's like you're trying to get these ideas from other people. You're trying to follow other people when you're you're the one that's going to have these creative ideas coming to you. You might already be channeling and having these creative ideas come up, but then you're doubting it. You're second guessing it. You're going to someone else that's actually not even as experienced as you to ask them for advice, to ask them for their approval. But it's like you know what to do. And I'm not saying to dive in recklessly, obviously, like if you're getting more into spirituality, you do need to take steps to ground yourself, to protect yourself, to, you know, take the time to learn. I really just dove in. I dove right in. Like I was, I, I when I went through my spiritual awakening, I dove right in, but I wouldn't, I mean, that path worked for me, but I did fuck around and find out a lot. It was a, it was a major, you know, trial and error process. It was, a, it was a really messy a learning experience for me because I just dove right in. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for other people. I would recommend grounding, protecting yourself and kind of, you know, being more balanced. But, um, but yeah, I also wouldn't personally trust any psychic or healer out there that says that their way is, is the only way. There are so many paths to the same destination. There are so many paths. There's so many, there's so many different perspectives out there and they're all valid. You know, life is made up of so many different perspectives. So it's not, there's not just one right way to do things. And again, it comes down to like different experiences. So what works for you might not work for others. And it's really important to kind of understand that to, um, to hold space for that. 
And, and that's the problem with a lot of these, you know, the, the toxic type, the surface level healers, I should say, you know, because again, it might work for some people, but it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't think it really works for people that have deep traumas. And I think it's more like putting a bandaid on it on a much deeper issue. It's like you have like a wound and someone just puts a bandaid on it and you're like, oh, it feels better for a minute. But then a week later, it's, it's that wound is still there. That wound still needs to be addressed. That wound still needs to be genuinely healed. Even if you don't want to look at it, it does need to be looked at. You know, so that's the problem with a lot of these surface level healers that just want to put a bandaid on it and just, you know, positive vibes only. It's just, you know, not able to, to get deep, not able to, um, like we were talking about, they're not really able to align. They're not in alignment. They're, they're not, they're not really in alignment. Or again, for some, for some, I guess they are for some, like, you know, if they've had easy lives, they are, but, but yeah, for most, it's not going to work. So the thing with those, those type of healers, like the surface level healers too, I mean, aside from just, again, the spiritual gaslighting is just so incredibly toxic. It really convinces people that there's something wrong with feeling very normal human emotions, like anger and pain, when those are our very natural part of life. Um, you know, on top of it, I feel like it just really shames people as well. It convinces people to, to again, suppress their emotions. And then those emotions are going to come out later in uglier ways. That side of yourself is going to demand, that shadow side is going to demand to be heard. The shadow side is not your enemy. It's part of you. You know, when you're at war, it's like you end up being at war with yourself when you try to deny that, when you try to suppress that. And that's, you usually end up, it's like these people have to end up having to be in, at war with themselves because their shadow side gets louder and louder and louder or their ego as well. It's like you, when you deny it, when you try to just be positive and you suppress it, it gets louder and louder to the point where it's almost its own entity. It's almost like it takes on a life of its own because it gets so, um, it gets so loud trying to, trying to be acknowledged, trying to be heard, you know, trying to be in alignment with you because it's a part of you that you're not acknowledging. And so that's when you end up being at war with yourself because this part of yourself gets so intense that it's almost like it's its own entity where you, you really have to just kind of learn to naturally, um, like it won't be so loud if you acknowledge it is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like that anger and pain, it's like you suppress that anger. That's when you notice that, like you suppress that anger and pain. That's when like a couple months down the line, you just explode. And it's just, you're, it's so messy. It's such a huge deal. Whereas if you had just allowed yourself to cry, allowed yourself to feel, allowed yourself, you know, to, to feel what you feel and let things flow naturally, it's not going to get as out of control. You know what I mean? It's when something, when a need's not being met, when something's, when you're having to suppress something, that's when it's like, it gets louder and then you end up being at war with yourself. So just, just embrace this, these parts of yourself, look at them, acknowledge them, do the shadow work. But, um, but yeah, what I wanted to say too, is, is with a lot of these, uh, with, with a lot of these surface level healer types, I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of control issues with them too. And you can feel that there's a certain energy. I was thinking about it last night, actually. There's a certain, when you're being controlled by someone, there's a certain energy that you feel and you need to not let anybody gaslight you when that comes up because you can feel it. There's, there's a, I was just thinking about it. There's like, it's, it's, I don't know if it's like channeled or what you would call it, but it's like when you're being controlled, your, your body feels it, or at least for me, I don't know how it is for you guys, but like for me, if someone's controlling, if someone's trying to control me, like a friend or someone's just being bossy, it doesn't matter what they're saying. They can be, they can, you know, have a completely normal conversation with me, but I can feel the energy behind their words. And it's like this, it's hard to explain the sensation, but it's like this tightness. I almost feel it in my body. It's like, I feel very tense. I feel almost like trapped a little bit. Like I, like you can feel it, you know, and listen to that is what I'm saying. If someone's trying to control you, if you just feel like you could just tell that they're gaslighting you through their words, if you're feeling something's off, like really listen to that because a lot of these um these surface level healers again they don't have the depth and the empathy to really understand multiple, multiple perspectives they, they can't understand anything outside their own perspective for the most part most of the ones that i've met at least but i'm sure there's exceptions but they also I, something else i've noticed with them is a lot of them have these really bad control issues where they, they want to create followers. 
They don't want, genuine leaders want to create more leaders. That's how you know when you're seeking out a mentor, because I think some of, whoever this is for, I feel like you are seeking that out. You need to find somebody who's genuine and who wants you to learn on, who wants to guide you, but also wants you to learn on your own and wants you to go down your own path. A genuine leader, a genuine, like the right mentor is going to want you to go down your own path, the path that's in alignment with your soul. Even if that's completely opposite to their ideals or their perspective, they're still going to want you to do what's right for you. They're going to want you to find your true self and be in alignment with that. A false mentor, a false, you know, false healers, people that just have control issues, they don't, they don't want to create more leaders. You know, genuine leaders want to create more leaders. False leaders just want to create more followers. It's all about their ego. They just want, they, they it's, it's all about them. It's their perspective. They want to leave their mark on the, on the world. And I feel like they, they kind of have this sense that they can do that through their followers, like through teaching a specific path and people have to be in alignment with that path or they're doing it wrong. You know, there's all these control issues and you can feel it. And not saying that there's anything wrong with someone teaching you their perspective and their path and what works for them, but I think it's, it becomes toxic when they say that that's the only way to to be happy. That's the only way to be successful. This is when they have that one perspective and they can't see outside of that, that's when it becomes toxic, I think. So you need to really, when you're looking for mentors, because whoever I'm talking to, you are psychic as well and you do channel, but you don't realize that you're channeling is, is what I'm feeling here. So you need to really look at the energy of these mentors. Do you feel that energy of control? Do they, are they able, ask yourself these questions, maybe even make a list of what you want in a mentor. Because I've met a lot of false mentors out there. And again, they're all ego. They all just, they, they want followers. They don't want to create more leaders. Um, and you need to really be mindful of that. Maybe make a list of what you're looking for. Is this person able to see multiple perspectives? Is this person trying to control me and, and dictate, you know, what path I go down? Or are they trying to just be there as a support and as a guide and letting me learn and letting me go down the path that's right for me? You know, letting me do what's in alignment with my soul. So, so really, yeah, there's a lot of really toxic psychic vampires, control freaks out there in the spiritual community. Um, disguising themselves as mentors, as leaders. So you you really need to be mindful of that. And I feel like whoever I'm talking to, it's like I feel like you're in this community where, where it's like you're you're see, you're you're meeting the same type of healers and you're not the, t the same type of healer that they are. Again, they're more positive vibes only type healers. And you're, you're a genuine healer. You're not a surface level healer. You're a genuine, you know, you can, you can heal people on a deeper level, on, on much deeper levels. You can get deeper. You can do the shadow work. You can help people get into alignment with themselves. Um, so really don't doubt yourself and don't let these people get in your head. Cause I just feel like I, I see one woman in particular. I just feel like this woman is like very, um, this is for one specific person out there, but I just, I keep seeing her. She's got like this black curly hair and I just feel like she's very, um, she's like positive vibes only, but I feel like as she leads you, it's like, she tells you, it's like, you're doing it wrong. Like you're doing it like, this isn't the way, this is the way. Like she's being really controlling and you can feel that she's not, she's trying to get you to go down her path, not down your path. She wants to meet, you know, she wants you to be like her. She thinks that she knows everything. Again, that's the sign of someone who's not a genuine leader not a genuine mentor they're all ego there there there's not like a genuine um again i feel like genuine leaders that like that that desire to lead comes from a soul level it comes from a very deep place where they genuinely want to help people they genuinely want to be a support they genuinely want to to lead but but people that you know again the majority i think out there of, of leaders are just they're all ego and it's like they it's all about themselves. They're, they're really, it's, it's not coming from a selfless place, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. It's like, it's, it's, they have their own motives for wanting to be a leader. You know what I mean? But yeah, this woman I keep seeing, it's like, she's, uh, 
I just feel like she she keeps saying that like you're doing it wrong or you're and it's like you're not doing anything wrong you're you're not doing anything wrong your path is different than hers some people resonate with like with logic with um you know with with planning things out other people resonate with more of a chaotic energy with with going with the flow with jumping into it you again there's no wrong way there's just multiple different ways to do things and what works for some isn't going to work for others and this woman that I'm I'm channeling she doesn't understand that she feels like just very almost I don't know if bitter is the right word but she just feels like um well I've been through this and this and this so I know it's my way or the highway I know how things are but but yeah that's not your path you're nothing like this woman and you need to kind of step back and understand that you're nothing like her what's working for her what's worked for her her perspective her very limited perspective it's it's not your path it's not in alignment with your soul it's not going to work for you she's going to keep misleading you because I just feel like you did something I don't know I keep feeling like you're doing something that's like very creative and adventurous and that's your path that's what works for you again so many different perspectives out there and there none of them are wrong there's just different perspectives and you have to you can have your own perspective but be open to other perspectives as well even if they don't resonate with you just hold space and acknowledge that they work for other people and it's like, I just feel like you did something creative or, or outspoken or adventurous. And it, it's what resonates with you. And this woman is like, no, that doesn't work. This is going to, like, she's telling you her life experience, not yours. She's like, that's not going to work because I did that before and this and this and this happened. Or that's not how you do it. It's just like, just very controlled. And you need to, you need to listen to your intuition because you feel trapped around this woman you feel that that sensation that physical sensation that energy of being trapped of being controlled you know you're meant to go down a creative path you're meant you need to find your own path here and stop listening to these people that are nothing like you um for me personally like I'm because I, I again I'm getting someone that's like very similar to me I'm more of a so I guess you could call me a light worker. I mean, I think most would consider me a light worker, but I'm more of a of a dark worker and not a dark worker in a sense of like evil. Like there is there is a difference. There is a major difference between darkness and actual evil. You know? Like darkness is a normal, you know, light and darkness need to be balanced. They need to be merged. Darkness is a very normal part of, of the human experience. Darkness isn't, I don't, I don't see darkness as a bad thing. I see darkness as a beautiful thing. Evil, on the other hand, like morbidity, demons, all that, I do not mess with that. I stay far away from actual evil. But but darkness, on the other hand, you know, the the negative human emotions, all of that, that's it's it's those are those are energies that I do work with and I do tune into. So, and I think I'm more of a a when I again, when I say dark worker, dark worker, I don't mean evil. I just mean I'm more of a dark worker in the sense that I work with um, the the heavier emotions and the heavier energies more to bring about healing. Again, not for everybody, but like for me, I really I'm I'm put in these situations where I'm very drawn to um, to kind of push people out of their comfort zone to. Like a lot of times when I actually am healing someone, I end up making them cry, but it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's something that's, I'm, I'm able to bring these things to light in people. I'm able to bring up these traumas, but it's something that they usually need to look at. And I, I feel spiritually guided. Like I end up channeling their spirit guides and bringing it forth. I'll give it, I'll give you a couple examples, but yeah, it's like, I work with more emotions with, with chaos, with passion. You know, I have friends that are very logical and I'm, even though I don't resonate with it, I can hold space for it. I can understand that perspective and I get that it works for, for them. I accept that it works for them, but it's not personally for me. I'm more of the emotional, passionate type, but I'll give you an example. So it's, it's like, I was in a, a, a Uber once and we were talking and I was channeling for her and her, and her spirit guides told me to, you know, trigger warning here. Her spirit guides told me to bring up a sexual assault that she went through and I started channeling details from her and it was actually from her angels, I believe, because I was getting a lot of angels around her and, uh, you know, she, she ended up like crying, but she was like really thankful for it. She's like, you know, thank you. Like I, like she needed that message and she let me know she was like really, really grateful, you know, and, and I needed also to tell her that her son was, um, worried about her because of it. <clears throat> 
like, cause I was feeling that and I channeled some messages for her. So, I mean, that is not, you know, that's not something that like a traditional light worker would do. They would be like, oh, you know, what happened? Get over it. Think positive. But it's like, no, she wasn't over it. And she wasn't going to, she was probably in survival mode. She was probably trying to tell herself she was over that sexual trauma, but she wasn't actually over it. Um, and I think she needs to go back and to feel it and to have that, that purging and that, that clarity and that understanding. She needed to really, you know, to, to heal it. She wasn't okay. But, it, but again, a traditional light worker or, or what have you wouldn't, you know, they would have told her to just keep, keep chugging on and keep, um, you know, just keep staying positive. But it, it's like, no, she was in pain deep down, even if she wasn't acknowledging it, even if she was trying to suppress it, it was still there. It still needed to be felt. Um, and she needed those messages. I had another situation too, where I, um, this was actually like a month ago, I posted a video about, uh, I posted a video where there was some channeled messages from a spirit, um, who had crossed over and she wanted to connect to her, uh, her fiance. And I posted it on YouTube and I met the man in person like a week later. And I actually, and, and I would never like, I'm, I'm, I would never give out client information, but I mean, these people, I know they don't care on for one. And, and secondly, um, they're not actually clients. Like they weren't people that came to me for readings. Those were just people that I met. So, I mean, usually I don't share people, share, you know, information about other people, but like I said, it's like, they weren't clients. It wasn't like a, a personal, you know, private conversation or anything like it was up on my YouTube channel you know what I mean and, and it just it ended up being that that message was for someone that I met in person a week later and they ended up channeling his fiance that crossed over for him and um I got some like really specific details and he ended up like you know breaking down and crying um and really like looking at things and I actually pushed him to really look at some things that he didn't want to look at like look at he had like suppressed psychic abilities from when he was a kid that he didn't really want to look at because he felt like he was crazy for them um and also just you know all the pain of, of what he went through with you know losing his fiance and everything and connecting with her but I mean it was like purging for him I think where he was really like emotional and he was crying a lot about it but, but again, that's not something that like a traditional, you know, positive vibes only healer would do. That's, that's like very, you know what I mean? Like they would just convince a person to be positive, but I don't think there's anything wrong with crying. Crying is actually a really good thing. It's, it's really, it's a normal human emotion. Um, so like, I'm more of a dark worker in the sense that like, I work with more, you know, heavy energies, darker energy, I, I guess you can say I work with chaos, with emotions, with passion, with um more um I guess destructive energies you can even say where I kind of am brought to people's lives and I'm kind of meant to like shake things up and and uh push them out of their comfort zone and push them to look at things that they don't want to look at but they need to look at that their spirit guides want them to look at you know more um yeah more you know darker energies chaotic energies destructive energies I guess you could even call it you know the heavier emotions those are those are energies that I, I tend to to work with to bring about change. And, you know, healing is very messy. It's not linear. Healing is very up and down. It's very, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of pain. There's even resentment. There's so many different emotions that come up when you're, when you're healing. It's not, you know, it's not just always going to feel good. It's going to, it's going to, it should feel, you know, I think, um, there was a lot of times it's like, what is that song like by Fro Fro beauty and the breakdown? I'm kind of hearing that song right now too. Like there's a lot of, um, it's like purging. Like it's, it's not, it's like, it's like you're crying, but it's not just like a depressed numb kind of crying. It's more like a, it's like a purging kind of crying where it's like, you're just like, things are just kind of flowing. You know what I mean? Where it's like a breakthrough almost. But, um, And we actually, and I'm, I'm not encouraging anyone to like go out and drink, especially if you're doing spiritual work. But it's like when I had those conversations with him, part of the time we were both drinking, you know what I mean? Which again, a, a normal, you know, most, most healers are going to say, oh, don't drink, don't go out, don't do this, don't do that. Just don't live your life. But it, it's like, and you have to, again, you have to be careful if you're doing spiritual work. You have to be really careful when you're, when you're drinking, because yes, they do call it spirits for a reason. It can open you up, but, um, 
So again, I'm not like encouraging that necessarily, but I'm just saying that like healing is messy. Like my process, usually when I help someone heal, like when I'm intuitively led to someone to help them heal, it usually there's like a lot of synchronicities, it just flows, but it, it can end up being messy. It can end up being one of those conversations that you have with a stranger at a bar where you're both, you know, both like I've had those too, where it's like you have a conversation with a stranger at a bar and you're both drinking and you just tell them something that's just so outspoken and you just have this honest, raw, vulnerable conversation. And that connection, though, like them being seen, being heard, being understood, just that human experience, human connection. That's what we're here for, that that emotion, that that depth, that that's the things that make life worth living. You know, I think I've, I've done far more healing that way than I ever would if I was, you know, trying to just tell people to be positive. There's no emotion behind the the positive vibes only. You know what I mean? Like you can feel that it's not really healing you or anybody else because it's like there's no there's no emotion behind it. It's just like there's no you can feel when you're genuinely healing because there's like a breakthrough. You know what I mean? Like there's like this. It's like you feel like this sense of like freedom, like you feel it's almost like this free spirited kind of like a, a spiritual energy, at least for me, like that's, that's, you know, again, and you have to, you know, again, there's different perspectives, you have to find what works for you. But like, for me, it's like, there's this um, almost like this, like free spirited, like high vibrational, like just very spiritual, very deep energy that I feel when I'm genuinely healing it's like this breakthrough where it's like there's there's this raw emotion and it's like even if I'm crying or whatnot, it feels like a good thing. It doesn't feel like it doesn't you can feel the energy difference between stagnation and, you know, things genuinely flowing like that, that river just genuinely flowing. And I've always felt like, you know, there's a like with the positive vibes community it's, it's a lot of stagnant energy and you can feel that if you, if you tune in, you can feel that sensation where it's stagnant and you end up getting frustrated, repeating it again and again and again. And there's no genuine healing taking place because it's just service level. They're not digging deep enough. So, and, and yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not saying like go out and drink. I, I just want to make that clear because I'm, I'm just, but I'm saying there's been times like that when I've, when I've helped someone heal and it's been like, you know, a drunk conversation at a bar with somebody or it's been like, it's been very messy. It hasn't been like traditional, you know what I mean? It's been very, um, it, it's, it's, you know, been at these times when I've been outspoken, I've said things that, that were, you know, probably scared people, things that I, you know, most people might not have wanted to say. Like I've, there's been plenty of times when I've been completely outspoken. I've just called some, there's been, there's a lot of times too, when I'm, I'm led to call someone on their shit or I'm like really led to just like push someone to face something that they don't want to face. But again, they, they end up being thankful for it. They end up, it ends up resonating with them. Um, but I can tune into the energy and feel this difference when, when things are stagnant and things are genuinely flowing, when things are naturally flowing. Again, there's no, it's not good or bad. There's, there's all, there's the full spectrum of human emotions. It's part of life and just really embracing that, not, you know, controlling it, but not letting it control you. Um, and I don't mean controlling it in like the sense of like having control issues and having to be on top of everything. I just mean, don't like, if you feel pain and anger, let it flow. Don't, don't feed it. Don't try to make it worse. Just, just, it's a, it's a normal human experience. Just let it flow. Just, just let things flow naturally. Um, but yeah, like tune into that energy difference. And I would recommend journaling for you for whoever this is for. I don't even know if anyone's stuck stuck through to the end of this video. I know I rambled quite a bit. So who knows if anyone's even still here at this point. But um, but I would recommend, if this is for you, I'd recommend journaling for one. If you're finding a mentor, you need to ask yourself important questions. You need to, you know, protect yourself and ground yourself, but also continue learning how to channel because you are channeling already. You just don't recognize it as channeling. But again, you're meant to be a leader and an innovator. So you're not really, you're meant to bring ideas into the world. You're not meant to, um, you're looking to other people to find out what their ideas are, but you're meant to bring your own ideas into the world. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a mentor though, especially if you're just starting out, it does help. But, but again, just really use discernment because there's so many, you know, just, there's so many people who have suppressed and it's, it's a defense mechanism too. It's, it's this whole, you know, I don't need love or I don't need, um, other people, or I don't need my shadow side. It's, it's a control issue. It's a defense mechanism. 
or they they want to suppress those sides of themselves. They want to suppress their very normal human desires or normal human emotions. Um, it's it's all about control, and and when you really dig into that and kind of see that for what it is, it helps a lot. It helps you see things more clearly. When you start tuning into these energies, and you can recognize what what feels stagnant to you and what feels, uh, what feels genuine, what's genuinely flowing. And also, again, like as you look to other people, understand that they're telling you their experiences, their perspective, what works for them might not work for you. So take what does work, take what does resonate, find your own path. You're meant to, again, you're meant to be a leader, you're meant to be an innovator. So you're meant to come up with your own creative path. That's going to be very specific to you. Like you might even take things from this video and be like, oh, that that makes sense to me. That makes sense. This resonates. I think this is an alignment with my soul, but this these couple things weren't. So so discard them. That's fine. You can understand my perspective on that, but not take it on yourself. It's again, I think it's important to open to multiple perspectives and understand them, even if you're not adopting them. But but you're really meant to find your own creative path. You're really meant to find your own creative path. So so yeah, ask yourself some important questions when looking for a mentor. Um, do they feel stagnant? Do, do they allow you to think for yourself? Do they allow you to be creative? Do they allow you to be adventurous? Do you feel trapped or controlled? Is there that energy, that vibration of control when you're around them? Um, can they be questioned? That's another important thing to ask. Can they, because genuine leaders are not going to mind questions. And it's one thing if you're like interrogating them or being rude, then yeah, no one, no one likes that usually, but but a genuine leader is going to want you to ask questions. They're not going to mind being challenged a little bit. They're not going to mind if you're, if you're, you know, if you have a different thought or a different idea, they're not going to mind that. You know that you're dealing with a false leader if you question something that they said or did and they expect you to just blindly follow them or they just say, you know, well, this is right because I said so or this, you know what I mean? Like a genuine leader is going to, um, for one thing, you know, life is a, a, a learning and unlearning process. So a genuine leader is also going to be able to admit when they're wrong. They're going to be able to admit when they're wrong and go back and try to do things differently. They're going to be able to change their perspective. A genuine leader can genuinely like, um, they can grow, they can heal, they can see things differently. You know, they don't just stay in one limited perspective their whole life. So if someone's not moving, if they're stagnant, I mean, that's a sign that that might not be someone that you really want to follow, that you really, and again, I don't think you're really, you're, you're already a leader yourself. You're just still tuning into those past life abilities, but you're, you're not, um, you're not meant to really follow anyone. Even if you have a mentor, they're not really, they're just kind of there to, to give you advice here and there, but they're not really going to be a huge part of your, um, process. I don't think. Because I think they're just going to kind of, you're going to bounce ideas off them and they're going to help you find your own path. But yeah, really, um, I'm going to wrap this up. Sorry, guys. But yeah, really uh, find a genuine, um, yeah, a genuine mentor. You know, like I said, maybe journal, ask yourself those questions. Are they able to be questioned? How do they react when I question something? How do they react when I have my own ideas that differ from their ideas? Um, how do they, how open are they? Are they open to the creative process? Are they open to, to all perspectives? Like just ask yourself, I mean, there's other questions you might come up with too, but ask yourself those things. And, and really just find your path and, and find out what type of healer you are as well. And I would, I would also do journaling for, um, like I would, I would be introspective right now as well and kind of look back and, and look again, look at what works for you. Cause like I said, I'm very emotional and that works for me. I manifest both. I manifest best that way, but I, I do know other people. I know other witches too, that are more logical and they manifest best when they're in that state of, you know, just, just logic, just very focused, very, you know, there, there's not that added emotion. They, they, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't think like logic manifests a whole lot when it comes to witchcraft, to be honest, because witchcraft is more emotional and spiritual. It's it's based. There's not really a whole lot of room for for logic. It's um. I'm seeing I'm seeing like a I keep saying because I've been rewatching Once Upon a Time and I keep seeing Once Upon a Time clips and it's like I'm seeing that scene where Rumpelstiltskin is teaching Emma how to do magic. And she's like trying to be logical and he's like, it's magic. You feel it. You feel it. You know what I mean? But um, 
anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is yeah, like, like what we've talked about, what works for me isn't going to work, for, might not work for you or vice versa. There's so many different paths, but, um, but yeah, it's like, I know people that are very logical and like, that's how they, they, they might manifest that way or they might, it works for them. Like it works. They're happy that way. You know what I mean? There there's, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's their path. So, so, so again, really, really, you know, take what you will from this, take what resonates and, and find your own path be willing to, you know, uh, learn and unlearn things, relearn things, um, be willing to be in a leadership role and kind of just find your own way. Even if it doesn't make sense to other people, it's, it's important that it makes sense to you. And, and yeah, what I was trying to say is I, I think I would do some journaling if I were you as well to look back, um, you know, past life experiences, but, but current life experiences as well you know, particularly like traumas, things, maybe do some shadow work, um, do some journal prompts some like shadow work, journal prompts, and maybe do some, uh, what was I going to say there? Like, I feel like you should, you should do some journaling on like what's worked for you in the past. Think about that and what's working for you presently. When was it in your life that you felt the most stagnant? When did you feel the most trapped or most stagnant? What are your triggers? Like, look at those things. When did you feel like what part of your life did you feel like you were manifesting the most? When did you feel like when in your life did you feel like you're you're you were manifesting the most? What was it? What was the emotion that you were tuning into? What was the energy? What was going on at the time in your life? Like really think about stop listening to other people so much. And you can listen to other people to an extent, but also listen to yourself. What works for you? Find what works for you. Um Anyway, I'm going to put this out there. I hope this helps somebody.